One second, going live. I'm going to go ahead and just mute everybody now. Um, so I'll just unmute yourself. Um. Okay. Should we share my screen in a sec? We can see it. Awesome. Right, okay, welcome everybody uh, to this London Excel Meetup uh, event where we have Mark Proctor to take us through Office Scripts and, and everything we didn't know Office Scripts could do, which I can't speak for yourselves, but I'm expecting is that most of us probably don't know much about Office Scripts. That's generally the case and is pretty much the case uh, for me, although I have done a, a chunk of Mark's course on early days. Uh, so hopefully there's a, it's going to be quite interesting for a lot of us, which is probably part of the interest in this is something quite new for many of us, I think. Um, moving through my usual talk before uh, Mark takes us underway. Um, things to note. So apologies for boring the regulars, but this is the, the usual spiel uh, that we are live on YouTube at the moment. And the live stream there will also be the recording. Uh, Taya shared it in the, the chat earlier. She might share it again in a second. But that link is on the Meetup event page as well. So you can always find it there if you want to watch the event again or if you have to skip off for some reason, uh, then you can always catch that, that replay. Um, and it will also be in a follow-up email. So anything that needs sharing, if Mark wants us to share anything or if I share obviously details of upcoming events and stuff like this, this will all be in a follow-up email along with that link as well. Uh, but the email only goes to those who have RSVP'd for the group. So I don't bother everyone in their group. Um, so if you haven't RSVP'd and you want to, uh, go to that page and do it now, or you will not get said email. Uh, moving on, events. Not much to say on event talk because I only have two. Uh, so you, tend to come in waves, my events, where I have loads booked up in advance and then you know, I don't do anything for a few months. Um, but this is quite a big one. This is taking up a lot of my time, to be honest. Uh, and it's only about three and a half weeks away or something. Uh, 9th of October, we have a Munich event. So it's an in-person only. There'll be no YouTube stream or anything like this, no Zoom. Uh, it's only in person. Um, and all the, the little pictures that you can see on screen there, uh, the likes of Robert Mundigal, Dave Benign, Sue Bays, and Zebro. You know, we've got 10 different speakers with uh, myself included, as you can see there. So it's, uh, it's quite a large event with tons of networking and that, that to be had. So quite a special thing uh, doing it um, away from London, London Excel Group on tour. Depending on how this goes, it may happen again. Who knows? Uh, this is going to be pretty awesome. A whole weekend for people out there. Uh, planned for festivities as well. Uh, on that note, so that event, uh, but we also have a follow-up one, um, literally just, you know, borderline 10 days later there, um, on the 18th of October, where we have Michiel and Henk coming over from the Netherlands. Um, so we still need to arrange the venue, but this will be London, back in London. And once again, that is also in-person only. No Zoom, no YouTube, none of this. If you have to be there, if you want to to see it and meet them in person and that kind of stuff. Uh, so there will be online events. Don't let this slide put you off. <laughs> this is not the last one. Uh, it's just I haven't got any of us booked for the moment. Uh, so we've got two in-persons coming next month, um, which will be awesome. And there will be in-person ones to come as well. Um, that session on the 18th, as you can see, will be Power Query and DAX, uh, what they've labelled next level. So... If, if you think you're quite beginner level there, don't let it put you off. Um, I'm sure it will still be great and you still learn something. Don't let words like next level yeah, overwhelm you. Uh, let it interest you. And nothing more to say on the, on the upcoming event note. Um, oh, look, there's a little picture mark. Looks exactly the same as it does in, <laughs> in the shot there. Um, but... Uh, this is Mark's course, which he'll, he'll probably tell you about. You know, he's here to talk about Office Scripts, 
I've mentioned this course on previous events, uh, but even more appropriate now he's here and he's going to give us a, a bit of a teaser, I guess, as to what they can do. And if you want to learn it properly, rather than the, the 60 minutes or so that Mark's going to give us a presentation, then sign up for his comprehensive uh, course. Uh, links will be coming in the chat window if they're not there yet. And um, and that discount is running, Mark, yeah? Just for the echo. Yep. Um, so awesome. We'll, we'll share that link a few times probably because I'm sure people will be coming into this uh, called your in it. So if you're interested, you know, give that a click and store it on a tab somewhere. Uh, otherwise, for me, that is my last slide, I think. Uh, so if I stop my share and, if, and let Mark take us through Office Scripts. Well, hello, everyone. Can everyone hear me? If someone can just put yes or no in the chat, that would be useful. Yes, we can. Yes, good. Right. Let me share my screen. Uh, this is always the scary bit where you end up sharing the wrong screen and who knows whatever else. Hopefully you can all see. Yes, I can see that in the preview window there. <clears throat> right. So today we're talking about uh, Office Scripts uh, under the title of uh, I didn't know Office Scripts could do that. So it's kind of a uh, some of it is, is some beginner stuff. Some of it is a bit more advanced. Some of it is just showcasing different techniques that we can use uh, with Office Scripts. But before we get there, uh, a few things about me. So I am a, I'm a chartered accountant. I qualified about 18 years ago, and now I work as a consultant and I do training uh, around reporting automation and primarily in Excel and also in Power BI. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP. Uh, you can see my contact details there. So you can find me on LinkedIn. You can contact me through my website or via email. My main home is over at excelofthegrid.com. And then I have a YouTube channel, which is youtube.com at Excel of the Grid. Uh, so you can find all of my uh, latest posts and content there. As Alan said, I've got a course about Office Scripts. Uh, so this is a is not necessarily uh, taking you through those beginner stages, but trying to give you a flavor of the kind of things that Office Scripts can do and how you might approach it and how you might approach it in a different way to how you might think about uh, VBA. Um, so that being said, let's make a start. The agenda today, we've got three main areas. First of all, Office Scripts 101. Uh, this is kind of the introductory bit. What is Office Scripts? How do they work? How are they different to VBA? And so on. Then we have uh, our first project, which is a burst reporting project. That's about how we send out reports uh, from, a single, from a single report to different people. And that'll be the lion's share of what we're looking at. Uh, and then we have project two, which is more of a walkthrough of how we can apply some of these same techniques that we covered in project number one. Uh, if you've got any questions, please put them in the chat. Chances are I'll probably look at them at the end of the session. Uh, Alan, if there's anything that is so uh, blatantly obvious that needs to be asked, then please feel free to interrupt me as we, as we go along. So Office Scripts 101, what are Office Scripts? Uh, that's, the, that's the first question. And, um, to answer that, we can say that Office Scripts are a programming language uh, which, are there, which are there to co automate common tasks in Excel. And they're designed to empower people who don't normally consider themselves programmers uh, to create small programs. So if you're a developer, then chances are Office Scripts are not the solution that you're looking for. It's intended for primarily for end users. Now, Office Scripts are a combination of two things. First of all, we have Excel's document object model, which is also called the Office Scripts API. And really, this is just the map of where we find things in Excel. So if we wanted to change the value of cell A1, for example, um, if we wanted to change that cell to the value of 100, we would know that we'd start the workbook, then we'd have to go to a worksheet, and then we'd go to a cell, and then we'd change that to 100. We can't just open up Excel and say, 100, we need to go through that map of the workbook to the worksheet to the cell to the value of 100. So that map internally inside Excel is known as the document object model. That's how we can find things in Excel and where how Excel knows where things are. The other element is TypeScript. So TypeScript is a derivative of the JavaScript language. JavaScript was developed in the mid 90s, primarily as a way of, in, of giving interactivity to websites. Uh, before that, they were 
uh, tends to be static, but with JavaScript, we were able to add uh, interactivity. The TypeScript was developed by Microsoft um, as a more stringent form of JavaScript. And it's TypeScript that provides the kind of the language um, for the syntax of how we work with functions and arrays and logic and loops. That's what TypeScript provides us. Uh, and then within that, we can then work with this document object model. Now, because TypeScript is primarily a web-based language, a lot of those elements don't relate to Excel because Excel is not a website. So therefore, lots of elements have been removed or have been removed for security purposes because Microsoft wants to make sure that Office scripts uh, are completely secure. So obviously, the key question that everyone asks is, what's the difference between Office scripts and VBA? Why bother with Office scripts when we have VBA and so forth? So let's just spend a few minutes uh, working through this and thinking through it. Microsoft have given us like this, this matrix of how we might think about uh, development inside uh, Excel. So if you are a developer, so if you're developing tools for Excel and for Excel users, then com add-ins and web add-ins is probably where uh, you'll be using your, your time and the kind of languages that we might be thinking about. If you're an end user, so someone who actually uses Excel, then VBA and Office Scripts uh, are the technologies that we have. Now, VBA, which is no longer actively being developed, um, is primarily for desktop and individual users, and Office Scripts is over this side in terms of cross-platform and collaboration. The thing is that this kind of matrix makes us think that Office Scripts and VBA are comparable to each other and that one is kind of replacing the other. And hopefully as we go through, you'll see that's not really the case. What Office Scripts gives us is something different to VBA. Um, so I think that's an important consideration uh, when thinking about, should we use Office Scripts, should we use VBA? But actually, they have different strengths and weaknesses, and therefore we might use different solutions. So first of all, in terms of the differences, so um, Office Scripts works on web, it works on PC, it works on Mac when we know that VBA works well on PC, it works slightly well on Mac, and it doesn't work at all on the web. So Office Scripts gives us that true cross-platform uh, functionality. Office Scripts is also designed with modern security methods. So Office Scripts work and sit inside that kind of that cloud environment. Therefore, Microsoft's overall security architecture is covering all of that. And we'll see shortly why VBA has such a, uh, an issue with security um, and how actually VBA can cause problems if people aren't careful about security. One of the key distinctions is that the script files are saved outside of the workbook. In VBA, when we save, when we save an Excel workbook, that VBA is saved inside that workbook. When with Office Scripts, that script file is saved outside of that workbook. So that means you can build up a library of reusable Office scripts, and they can be there, they can be called any time that you want uh, because they're there available all the time. You don't need to open up another workbook. You can even save all of your scripts in a shared location on SharePoint, and therefore everyone in your team can then have access to all of those Office scripts. Now, obviously we have to say that because Office scripts have to work online and also in desktop, they do have a lower coverage of Excel's feature set, while that is growing, um, it does have a, a lower coverage. That is just a fact. And also because of the environment in which it works, it will always have a lower coverage than VBA. But we'll see why that is when we start looking at Power Automate. One of the biggest complaints about Office Scripts is the lack of internal event triggers. So by internal event triggers, what we mean is that if you open up a workbook, you can automatically run a script, a, a macro. If you click on a worksheet, you can automatically run a macro. If you change a cell value, you can automatically run a macro. There's lots of scenarios where there are triggers that automatically run macros. Office Scripts currently doesn't have any of those internal event triggers. There's a button that we can add onto the worksheet, but there's no internal event triggers. There's external event triggers, and we'll see some of those. So we can run an Office Script by receiving an email. We can run an Office Script by uploading a file somewhere, but they are external event triggers rather than internal event triggers. Office Scripts also have no access to other applications or the wider uh, environment. So 
Uh, even just saving a workbook, Office scripts can't do that. And you might think, well, that's such a basic activity. But when we come and look at, on the next slide, the next two slides, hopefully that'll make sense as to why that is different. Uh, and finally, uh, Office Scripts does have integration with Power Automate, and we will be using this throughout this presentation, this piece around Power Automate, because the two, Office Scripts and Power Automate, go together in terms of automating our processes. So as we continue to think about the differences between Office Scripts and BBA, here's just a brief illustration. So here I've got a green box. This represents a workbook. And in this workbook, I have three worksheets and uh, some VBA. I also have another workbook that's open and I have some other applications. Now we can easily use that VBA to control any one of those individual worksheets. But not just that, a VBA can also run and change the objects in other workbooks. It can also run and change other applications. So this is one of the issues around security. The fact that we might receive uh, a macro from the internet or from somewhere else, we might download it, open it, and then suddenly this macro executes because we've opened that workbook uh, and it's then controlled a whole load of other workbooks. It's potentially downloaded viruses and who knows whatever else. It can be quite malicious, which is why Microsoft introduced those new security measures. I think it was April or June last year. Uh, that meant we then had to unblock a macro and that was to try and prevent these kinds of scenarios where people just clicked enable without really understanding what what that vba uh what that workbook did and what that vba code did so how does office scripts differ well we've already said that an office script is saved outside of the workbook so we've got our in this screenshot we've got these same three workbooks or same two workbooks and our other applications now we can run our Office script to control anything in a workbook, but when it comes to other workbooks or when it comes to other applications, that is where we use a tool called Power Automate. Now Power Automate has the ability to run scripts. So therefore we can you go into Power Automate or we can use other triggers with Power Automate and we'll look at some of those later. And through that, we can run a script and that script will then um, interact with the objects in our Excel workbook. Not only that, but we can pass values back through the Office script, we can pass those back to Power Automate. So therefore, we can pass actions and values to and from an Excel workbook uh, into Power Automate. And using those events or using those values, uh, we can then use Power Automate to run other macros, not macros, other scripts, uh, to control other workbooks and other applications. So rather than VBA having that entire control over everything, instead Power Automate is the application that sits across everything uh, and can then run those individual Office scripts. And in here, when I'm talking about Power Automate, there's two versions of that. There's Power Automate Online and Power Automate Desktop. We're primarily thinking about Power Automate Online uh, in this context. Now there's another piece to think about, and that's the wider kind of Office Scripts infrastructure. Because Office Scripts, they currently run in Excel Online and they run in Excel Desktop. Now, I don't, what I'm about to show you, I don't know if this is 100% accurate. This is what I believe happens when we run scripts in Excel Online or if we run them in Excel Desktop. So when we work with Excel Online, ultimately we have a browser. That might be Chrome or something similar. Uh, and Excel, the, the workbook that we see is actually inside that browser. Now, what's actually happening is that somewhere else on a server, there is a version of Excel running. Now, I don't know how Microsoft has set up that version of Excel, whether it's, whether it's a server-based decision or however that is, I don't know. But on a server, there is a version of Excel. And what actually happens is that that workbook resides on that server with that instance of Excel. And when we make changes to our browser, it actually changes the version that we have on the server and it syncs backwards and forwards with all those changes. So what that means is that if we make a change in our browser, it syncs back to the server. Equally, if anyone else is using that same workbook, that also syncs back to that server. So any changes are kept in sync with each other. In Excel desktop, well, oh, sorry, um, before we get there, so, when we run a script in Excel Online, what's actually happening is we're running that script on that server version, and then it's syncing those values back into the browser. 
Now, when we use Excel desktop, we have Excel on our PC and we have that workbook that exists on our PC as well. But any time that we save a script, it has to be saved in OneDrive or SharePoint. It's always available in that, in that cloud environment. Even if our workbook is a local workbook, it still needs access to the internet to be able to run that OneDrive or SharePoint saved script. And what that means is that if we happen to also have a workbook that is saved on OneDrive or SharePoint, that those changes are then synced back to the version which exists on the server. So they're kind of the two environments that we've got. We've got an online environment and a desktop environment. And when we talk, when people talk about speed and the differences between VBA and Office Scripts, it's because your Office Script exists in the cloud, it exists completely off your PC, while VBA exists within your workbook. So those environments are completely different. Now, you might be asking or wondering, do you have Office Scripts? Well, the simple way to test is if you open up Excel and you have the Automate tab, then you're good to go. You have Office Scripts. If you don't have Office Scripts there, um, there's the list of licenses that you would need. So it's Office 365, it's the business licenses, enterprise educational licenses. Um, so if you have one of those licenses, but you don't have Office Scripts, they should be enabled by default. That means that your IT department has purposely turned off Office Scripts, which means that you just need to go to your IT admin and start begging for them to turn on uh, Office Scripts for you. So that's a, a bit of background about Office Scripts, how they work, how they function. Hopefully you can see that they are, um, they're not really, an, they're not a replacement for VBA, they are an alternative environment, a different way of achieving some different automations. Now, we're now going to move on and start thinking about a project. So we're going to work through a project. And by working through this project, we're going to see how uh, Office Scripts actually work. And our project uh, starts like this. So we've got this workbook that's called burst reporting dot or example one burst reporting dot XLSX. It contains a, uh, a report. Uh, and in that report, there are two cells that we can change. There's two parameters. Uh, the region parameter can have a value of north, south, east, west, central, or star. Um, so the, um, the star to be the fact that it can select all those. And then we have some valid dates, which are basically month end dates from January to June. So just to show you what this workbook actually looks like, here you go, here's the workbook, here's the section uh, that is the report. So we can check if we change on those values to south, you'll see that that report then updates. This is all based on this data here, which is just an Excel table with lots of made up data in it. But these two parameters drive the calculations which um, come into this, um, into this worksheet. We also have this calculation section and this calculation section just drives the chart. The chart's only there to give us um, something a bit more to look at, um, but the, you get the idea that we've got this report where these two parameters exist. Not only that, uh, but we have a sub-report. So for example, if we were to put uh, an asterisk in there, that would give us all the regions, which means we then might want to see a sub-report, which is broken down by North, South, East, West, and Central. So that's what we're working with. As we go through this example, I will try and zoom in a bit so that people can see uh, everything that uh, is going on. So that's the worksheet, or that's the workbook that we've got. Now, what we want to do in this project is to, for each of those regions, whether it's North, South, East, West, Central, or all regions, we want to create a, a PDF. Uh, the goal here is that we want to save this as a PDF, so therefore we don't share uh, other or other regions information with those stakeholders who receive those PDFs. And then we want to email those PDFs to each of the recipients. However, we've got a quirk here. And the fact is that Helen, uh, so you can see here, so we've got North, South, East, West and Central, and they go to Dave, Sally, Winston, Mandy, Jack and Helen. We've got a quirk here and that's the fact that Helen, who looks after all regions, 
wants to see not just that one sheet, but wants to see that additional worksheet. So Helen needs to get both worksheets, whilst uh, Dave, Sally, Winston, uh, Mandy and Jack just received the one PDF. So you, this is a kind of a scenario you might get. Uh, so as an accountant, you might find this uh, if we have um, cost center reports or uh, de departmental reports or reports to various customers or um, oh. other things like that. Yes, Alan. Sorry, mate. Um, will uh, files be provided? Uh, the As we go through at the end, if people want yeah. specific files, then I can provide them. But I think as we go through, it might not be relevant in terms of what we're presenting here. Yes, buddy. Now, we want to send all this, all this information, but to do that, we need to know who sends, who receives which files, where we save files to. So there's lots of information that we need to know. And for that, we have an additional workbook. That workbook is called example1.control.xlsx. So let's just have a look at that workbook. Uh, so here's that workbook. So in this workbook, we have um, a column called parameter sheet and all of our parameters are on a sheet called report. But then we have each of our regions, north, south, east, west, central and star. We have the period end. So they're the two parameters that we want to use. We then have different information in these other columns about um, the PDF reports and the emails that we want to send. So, for example, we have a column that says, well, what should we call our PDF? What's the name of the person? that this PDF should go to, and then also where should we send this email to with this PDF attachment? We also saw that everyone who gets the North, South, East, West and Central, that they just get a single report, which is called report. And then Helen gets both the report and also the sub report. So that's the goal. That's what we're trying to achieve with this project. OK, we're trying to send PDFs to specific people based on a report that exists in Excel. And we're going to use Office Scripts and Power Automate to achieve this. So the first thing we need to do is to, is to create a script. We need to create a script that will automatically um, change the cell values. So here, as I said, we've got two parameters. Uh, so as I change that value there, our chart updated. Now let's create our script. So to do that, we'll come to the Automate tab and then I'll click New Script. So this gives us this section on the right. Um, it has some default code in there, which we will take out in a few moments time. It's automatically created the script called Script32. I'm going to double click on that and rename. So we're going to call this LEM change cell value to so LEM for London Excel meetup. And then our script is called uh, change cell value. So that's now saved. And now let's write our script. Apologies, there's supposed to be some kind of flashing on the screen caused by the uh, zoom functionality, but hopefully that's not too bad. So let's write our script. Um, just get my notes up here. So we know that Excel has got this document object model or uh, Office Scripts API, as you might call it. And this is how we think about how things are structured. So if we wanted to change a cell, so this cell over here, my north cell, that is a named range that is called region. So that's called region and we have a date cell and that's called date. So if we wanted to change a specific cell, we'd start at the workbook level, okay, workbook. Uh, we then have, um, we then might want to get our worksheet. So we can start with the workbook, we then go to the worksheets, we'll start typing sheet, or even worksheet that might help. You can see we get quite good IntelliSense. It helps us here. It gives us all the valid options that we might want. See here we have Get Worksheet. So I'll select that. What's the name of our sheet? That's down here. Our sheet is called Report. 
So we're going to go from our workbook to our worksheet. Then we want to change our cell or our range. So we're going to find our range. We'll use the get range method for that. And our first range is called region. Now we want to change the value of that cell. So search the word value. You can see the IntelliSense comes in, get value. That sounds like, no, we want to set value. We want to change it. So that would be set value. And then let's set that value to east, for example. So all we've done here is move through this uh, document object model. We've said start with the workbook, then go to a specific worksheet, then go to a range, then change that value. So if we now zoom out of this, if we now run this script by clicking run, we should run that script and now our report changes to show east. Okay, so if we wanted to, we could easily then create the one for to change the date. So I'm just going to copy that code. I want to get the date range. And I realize I'm going to change this to text, but just let that go for the time being. Uh, and when I run this, it will change the, um, it's still east, but it's now changed the month. So we've just through understanding this document object model, we've been out and some um, some basic syntax to be able to change a cell value. Now, this changing of cell values might not seem particularly important. But actually, this is when we start thinking about how we automate processes with Excel, the ability to change a cell value that then updates a report is actually a really useful process. But everything here is hard coded at the moment, it only works with a worksheet called report, it only works with a range called region or date, uh, and it only works with our specific values. We want to create a script that we can save elsewhere that's used for any time that we ever want to change a cell value using Office scripts. So how can we create this, rather than this very specific script, a reusable script? So let me zoom in again on this, hopefully. So I'm going to start by creating a variable that would be called so let, that's how we create a variable, and the variable will be called WS for worksheet. We're gonna say let the worksheet equal, and then we can select our code there, and we can paste that uh, into there. So now we've got a worksheet which references our report worksheet. Now at the moment, we can only, we, we can only change two cells. So we can change the region cell or the date cell, but what if we had more cells or less cells that we wanted to change. So if we want to create a reusable script, what we might do is actually create a list of cells. So I'll call that let cell list, and that's gonna equal region comma date. It's not a comma, that's a full stop. Uh, so that will create region comma date. Let's also create a list of values. Let value list equal, uh, and let's go north comma, and let's change it back to March. Um, so Sergey's asked a question about, uh, we'll set value, uh, it won't, you, you'll see why we're doing this now. You would actually set this up with your date formats that would work, so there's no, um, there's no issue there in terms of regions because you would use your, your local region codes. So we've got our, our, our cell list now, so we know that we could easily add more or less cells to this list. Now what we want to do is to try and um, break this down. Actually, I want to change this slightly. Just as I think about this process, what I want to do is to create a worksheet name, which is called report. So I've got a worksheet name called report. And then down here, let me get this piece of code here. And then we can use this worksheet. And then we'll use our worksheet name. There we go. So now in Excel, um, if you, if you went back a few years, people were, people used to struggle with arrays. Like, what's an array? How does an array work? But now we have dynamic arrays in Excel. People are much happier with understanding the concept of an array, that a single value can be split into multiple values. 
So what we want to do is to change our cell list into an array. So I'm gonna put this let cell list ARR for cell list array. And this needs to be of a specific data type. We're gonna set that as a string data type. And we want to set this as a cell list dot split. So all this will do is take our cell list variable and split that um, into, into however many elements that we have inside this list. And we need to split that using a separator. So I'm gonna create a variable as well that's called separator. So let separator, and I'll set that equal to a comma. So broken down our cell list array, let's also get our value list array. And we're also gonna use value list.split, and we'll split that using the same separator. So we've now got two lists. We've got a list of cell values and or a list of cells and a list of values. And what we want to do is to loop through that list so that we can then change all those cells in one action. Now in Office Scripts, we have for loops and while loops. We have the loops that you would be used to using with VBA. So for a for loop, we'd say for, and then let i equals naught. So uh, in Office Scripts, it always starts counting from zero. So zero is the first number. And we want to loop while i is less than the number of items that we have in our cell list array. and then we want the length of that. And then we want to increase that number each time that we go. So as we're building up this example, hopefully you can see how this uh, is working. So we can then use our worksheet, WS, get range. And then we can use our cell list array and whichever item we're in within our loop. And we want to, um, we want to set that value. So set value, and we'll use our value list array and whichever item is in our value list. Right, which means that we no longer need this text at the top. We've now created this quite short script. So this short script accepts a list of values, a list of cells, a list of values to change. And when we run that script, it will change all of them. So we've got north, let's go. So it should change them to north and also to march. I'll click run on that. There we go. Our uh, Excel workbook has now changed. Now you're probably thinking those values are still hard coded into that, into that code. That doesn't do us uh, any favors. So how can we change these parameters? Because what we want is to actually loop through this table, this is the table that we uh, created earlier, or that we saw earlier. What we want to do is to loop through this table and we want to change the values based on the items in this table. This table represents the regions and who all those reports get sent to. So what we're gonna do in this project is using Power Automate, we're gonna loop through this table and then we're gonna use the values from this table to push those values into our Office script and then our Office script will then change our Excel workbook. So to do that, we're going to change our script so that we have no hard-coded values anywhere in this script. We're gonna pass these items in, the values that we'll get as parameters. So let me zoom in on here. So all of these items here that were hard-coded, we're going to pass them in uh, to our script. So WS name, string, uh, we then have cell list, that'll be of a string data type. We have value list, that'll be of a string data type. We have a separator, that'll be of a string data type. Now let's delete that code that we had at the start. The red underlines, anytime we see a red underline, it's like, it's like a spell check. So it tells me that I've got an error in my code. So that red underline is really useful. It's a nice uh, feature that we don't get inside VBA. 
And that's because I've not got my syntax right. There we go. So now everything in my script is going to accept all those text values that we previously created. It's going to run those in our script. So I'm going to save this script. And now let's head over into Power Automate and see how we can use this script with Power Automate. So Power Automate is available inside uh, Office 365. It's an online um, tool for automating processes. I'm going to create a new script by, or a new um, flow by clicking Create. Now, Power Automate can run with different kinds of triggers. So we have an automated cloud flow. That means that it's triggered by an external event. For example, we might receive an email, and when we receive that email, it's going to run our flow. It might be triggered by when a file gets uploaded or a file gets created or a file changes. So there's lots of external triggers that we can use. An instant cloud flow means we have to click a button and that then runs that script, um, that Power Automate flow that then will run our script. A scheduled cloud flow runs at specific times. Now, just to keep this easy, I'm going to use an instant cloud flow. We'll look at some more options in a few moments time. And we're gonna use this based on a button. So manually trigger a flow. So that means we have to click a button, that button uh, will then run our flow. So we're gonna call this LEM example one. And then I'll click create. So the first thing we want to do is to get the rows from our table. So if you remember here, we have this table. This table contains all the information we need about what, who gets what PDF, what information is in there. So we want to get this table. So this table is in a workbook called example one control. And my table is also called control. So I've got my, I click the button that's gonna run that script. Let's add a new step. So I'm gonna get all of those rows in that table. Uh, list, I've searched for list rows as an action. You can see list rows present in a table. So let's select that option. And then we get to find where you go and find where the workbook is that we want to use. So this is saved on OneDrive. And this can be on OneDrive or it can be on SharePoint. OneDrive, what file do we want to get our table from? That is from a file which is called example one control.xlsx. It will then go and look at that file. When I click on the drop down, it'll tell me that we have, that I have a table called control. So so far. When our trigger executes, it's going to get all of the rows in that table. We now want to run the script for every row in that table. So I'll click new step and then we'll search for our script. We have a run script action. So run script works with uh, OneDrive. There's also a run script from SharePoint. So now we can run scripts from uh, OneDrive and also those that are saved on SharePoint. Everything I'm showing you today is saved on OneDrive. Now I get now in these options, I have to try and find the workbook that I want to run the script on. So my workbook is saved in OneDrive for business, OneDrive again, and the file that we want to run is our example one burst reporting file. So this is the, so there's a distinction here. So we're gonna use this table as the loop that we go through, but the script that we actually want to run, uh, or the workbook we actually want to run the script on is this workbook here, the one that contains the report. So now in this drop down, I can search for my script. I'll search for LEM, I call it LEM uh, change cell value. I'll select that, that will then go and find my script and it will then tell me what the parameters are that I need to pass across. So I need to pass across the name of the worksheet that contained the parameters. I need to give it a cell list, a value list, and what the separator is. Now, if we come back here to this, to our control worksheet, our, um, our workbook that has the, oh, that's the next example, our workbook that we need to run this on is called report. So we have that in our table here report, then we have our region and our date. They're the values that we want to pass across. So my worksheet name, that, that worksheet name exists inside this table. So I'm going to click parameter sheet because that was the name of the column that had the name of the worksheet. 
which has the parameters that we want to change. Now, as soon as I click this, Power Automate will realize the fact that we have a table with multiple rows. Therefore, it's automatically added this apply to each action. So it's now going to apply whatever we put into this box into each row of the table. So we've got our script. Uh, we know what our worksheet name is, our cell list. We want to change our region and our date. And we want to change the region and the date. We want to pick up those values from that table. So we want the region, hang on, I'm in the wrong box. So we want to get the region, comma, and the date. So as we loop through that table, it's going to pick up those values. So it's going to pick up, so first it's going to start with north, comma, date, or the 31st of March, then south, comma, 31st of March, then east, as it goes through each one of those rows. And the separator that we've used is a comma. Right, let's just test this out, see whether this works. So I'll click save. So that's just saving. And now let's test this flow. So I'll click test, I'll see whether this works properly. Click continue and then run flow, click done. And now when we come across, well, hopefully it should start running. Your flow is running. Come back to our Excel workbook. We should start to see the parameters changing in this Excel workbook because this workbook is saved in uh, OneDrive. There you go, it's now changed to South, East. So we can literally see these changes being made by this script. Now we don't have to sit here and watch these changes. These changes will happen in the background, whether we have Excel open or not. So even if we don't have Excel open, Power Automate will still run and it will still make these changes in Excel. It's just the fact that we, we don't have to sit here and view it. So we've seen that we can run a script uh, from Power Automate. But actually our project didn't finish there. We have to keep going with our project. So, so far all we've done is to uh, is to loop through each of those values. We now need to save a PDF and then email that. So how can we save a, uh, a PDF? So in that apply to each step, we want to save that PDF or create a PDF. So if we come to edit and then we can create a new step. So within that same looping process, we're going to search for the convert file. So convert file, will convert an Excel file to another file format so it can convert it to a PDF. Don't worry, it doesn't change the original Excel workbook. We want to convert the file using the path, and then we can go and find the workbook that we want to use. So the workbook that we want to use is in my LEM examples folder, and it's this example one burst reporting.xlsx. And we want to save that as a PDF. Now, the thing is that when it converts or creates this PDF, it doesn't save that as a file. It keeps it in Power Automate's memory. And that's useful, as we'll see later on. But what we want to do is to add another action and then to save that PDF. So we will create a file. So create file in OneDrive for Business. And where do we want to save these files? Well, let's save them over here in my LEM examples folder. Uh, let me go back. Let me do this properly. There we go. So that's gonna save them in my folder. What file name do I want to call my PDF? Well, that was also available in our table. We want to call it our whatever value we've got in our PDF name column. So I can pick that there, PDF name. And what content do we want to save that PDF as? Well, we got our PDF content when we use the convert file using path step. And you can see that in here, convert file using path, we can use, we can pick up that file content. So now let's click save on this. I'm gonna test this and run it and we should see that we should start to get a whole load of PDFs. So we'll run this through a test process again. Continue and then run flow. 
Okay, so our flow has started running. We should start to see those changes happening inside Excel. But at the same time, we should start to see those PDFs being created uh, in our LEM examples folder. There's one already, there's the first one. North has suddenly appeared. There's South, we should see the next PDF being created. There we go, let's have a look at one of these PDFs. So there we go, there's our report. Now, because of how uh, Power Automate works, so Power Automate will run, it always runs on US dates. So therefore, at the minute, I've just used a short date for the format of this cell, which means that it shows in a US format. But um, if we formatted that in a uh, using a custom number format, we could make sure that that shows in our correct date format. Uh, so we've got our work, we've got our report. The problem is that this is the South report, so we should only see one report. The problem is we've got all of these sub reports and we've also then got uh, all these other pages as well. So it has converted every single worksheet, not just the worksheet that we want. So we've got some other steps that we need to do here so that this works properly. As you can see, these PDFs have now been created. Got those six PDFs there, but they're currently showing all of those uh, pages. So we now need to, a script that will hide the worksheets. Well, it will show the worksheets that we want to keep, the worksheets that we want to print. Now, because of time, I haven't got time to show you, uh, to talk you through how we might create this next script. But if we just look at it here, I've, pr I've prepared this one uh, already. Just wait for that to open up. And then let's just take a look at the script. Now, Excel has this, this feature where there must always be at least one cell visible at any time. Not, not one cell, one worksheet. There must always be at least one worksheet visible at any time, which means that if we start hiding sheets and making sheets visible, it can cause errors. Therefore, we've got this script that the first thing it does is to make all the sheets visible. We then run through a loop to only make the worksheets visible that we want to make visible. And that's based on a list of sheets that we pass through as a parameter at the top. So in Power Automate, we can pass down into this script a list of worksheets that we want to be visible. This script will make all the worksheets visible and then hide the ones that aren't in the list that we provided. So now let's add this script into our flow as well. So I'll come back to Power Automate uh, and that apply to each step. Actually, I need to click Edit. So before we create these PDFs, we need to run this additional script that only has the, um, that only makes the worksheets visible that we want. So I'll search for the word LEM again. No, I won't, I'll search for the word script first. And I need a script, so run script. Now again, we have to select the workbook that we want to run this script on. So let's find that in our document library. we want to find this in the LEM examples, and this is our burst reporting script. And the script that we want to run, so I'll search for that, that was our LEM sheet visibility. That will now bring up the parameters that we need for our LEM sheet visibility script. This needs two parameters, the worksheet name list and a separator. Again, we know what our worksheet name list is. It's here in this column in the sheets column. So everyone just wants the report worksheet, apart from Helen, who wants the report and sub-report worksheets. So from my list that we got originally from that first step, I can get my sheets and then I'll enter a separator because we used a comma between the name of those worksheets. Now, if we were to run this again, you'd see that it only gives us one PDF, but let's keep going and finish off this uh, this whole project. Let's add an action so that we can send an email with these uh, with this attachment. So send email, send, uh, yes, I'll send an email with Office 365. Now, who do we want to send this email to? Well, it's here. 
in my dummy email account. So, so in the send to list. So we can get up our list that we had before. Let me scroll down a bit. That's in our send to list. We can create our subject name. So these are the region reports. And then we can select any of those other values that we might have. So we have the, I think the, uh, the date name, and then we can create an email. So I'll say hi, and send that to the person, hi, name, whatever their name happens to be. Please, I haven't typed properly, please find your region report attached. Mark. Now we need to attach that file. So we want to attach, what's our file going to be called? We know that that's from the column that we had from our, um, in our table, so that's our PDF name. Now this is the point, actually, we didn't need to save our PDF at all because our convert file using path that kept that, that kind of that file in memory. We can just use that file in memory without having to create that file. So let's use that. That's down in the convert file using path action and we use the file content. Now let's click save. That's now saving. And now let's test this flow again. Click test, manually test. Right, and then continue. That's now running. And I'll click run flow. Right, while that's running, let me just check, that's fine. So we've got our email account here. Uh, we've got our flow. Oh, I didn't actually click done. Uh, so our flow is running. So when we run our flow, remember, we should get these, uh, it should start to change our Excel report. So that should happen any moment now. We should start to see those. That south being changed. If we come to our um, examples folder, you should see that north and south were both changed a minute ago. So they're overwriting those files. and we start to see these files being received as emails in Gmail. So let's take a look at this North PDF. And there you can see we have our one PDF page. And then if we zoom in, you can see that this is page one of one. So we only have that one sheet. We only have that one tab. So that's what we want. We just wait for those other reports to come through. So all of those are just updating now. So North, South, East, French, Central, and all regions. So we should have all regions coming in shortly. There we go, all regions. Let's have a look at that as a PDF. And there you can see that that is page one of three. So that has our reports, but then also the sub reports that only Helen should receive. And if we look at that email, you can see, hi, Helen, please find attach your reason. Oh, let me zoom in on that. Uh, so region report, March 2023, please find your region report attached. Thanks, Mark. And there is the PDF. So that is uh, our example one. Now let's so we went through, we created a script that changed those cell values. We we then found a script that then um, changed sheet visibility. We created PDFs, we sent them. Um, we made sure that the people got the information that they needed to receive. And it was all based on looping through this table of actions or this table of parameters inside Power Automate. Now you might decide that clicking a button to run this process isn't the best idea. We set up a manual trigger, but there's other triggers that we could use. We could use an email trigger so that if an email comes in from somebody with a specific subject, that could then trigger this flow to run. We could set it up so that if we make changes to a file, that all those changes will then trigger a flow. In that flow, we can ask whether a cell contains a certain value, and if it does, we can then run that flow. We also have this, um, when a HTTP request is received, I've got a blog post about this, um, so this means we can create a button inside Excel and we can run that script uh, and that will then trigger that flow. We can also 
download the, the Power Automate uh, app on our phones and we can click Run Flow in our phones and that will then trigger that flow. So there's lots of ways and lots of options as to how we can create these processes. So the key takeaway from this is that, so we've got these various scripts and the key takeaway is that we want to try and build a script library of reusable Office scripts. So that means that any time that we want to build a flow or anything else that changes cell values, we've already got that script. Anytime we want a script that makes sheets visible, um, we've got that script. So we're gonna build up this library over time of reusable Office scripts that we can then use within our Power Automate flows. So to demonstrate this, um, so to demonstrate this, I'm just gonna talk you through another project. So in this project, we have an Excel workbook, which is called example Two automatic update.xlsx. It contains a table called bank, and this is uh, bank information. Uh, and what we want to do is that each day we might download the, the, the updated bank information. Um, and what we want is a flow that will automatically get, that, get the information from that file populate it onto an Excel table. It will then update our report and our charts. It will then send that email with those numbers and those charts to the CFO. So for example, this is a finance function and the CFO cares about our cash balance and our cash trend, trend on a daily basis. So let's have a brief look through this, um, this kind of project and how this might work. Uh, so let me put up a file over here. Uh, there we go. So here we can see the, um, we've got a folder. And if I open up one of these files, so this file is just, for example, a download from a banking system. Uh, so it has a date. If I could be bothered to make up some fake descriptions, they would be in there. Uh, and then we have our values in there. So what we want is to create a flow. We'll look at the flow. Go back and look at LEM example two. Uh, so let me go to my flows. So this is the flow that I want. Oh, I clicked on the wrong bit. Let me go back again. So let's edit this flow and see how it works. This should open up briefly. So we've got a new trigger, a different trigger. In our first project, the trigger was when we clicked a button. This trigger is when a file is created. When we create a file in a folder called LEM examples bank downloads, when we create a file in that folder, that will then trigger this flow. The first script is going to run is a script which will, uh, let me open up that file again. So I close it, I think I closed it. Oh no. It's going, to, it's going to run a script that will get all of the used values, uh, all the values from the used range. So our first script will get these values. Okay. Our second script, uh, which is in here, so that's going to get those values and pull them into Power Automate. Power Automate is then going to push those values into our bank table. It's going to push those values at the bottom of this table here. That will update all the calculations and all of the charts. We then have the next script that gets those, gets an image of the charts. You'll see an, an, how, this, how this entire flow runs, and I'll give you links to where you can find uh, all of the, the code for, uh, to run these scripts. So our third script is going to get those, that image. Our fourth script is going to get a cell value. So our last cell value, uh, it's going to get our balance. And then finally, we're going to send an email uh, that has the closing balance, and that's the balance that we got from Excel, but also include a picture of the chart. So let's see how this flow might run. As it starts by us uploading a file into the bank downloads folder. So I'm going to select that first file and drag it in. This should now, so that will upload that file 
that should then trigger our flow. So if we come back, you should be able to see this flow uh, starting to run. Let me refresh that. Now, obviously in this, we've watched all of these processes as they've happened. We've kind of chased them around uh, Excel and everywhere else. In the real world, we wouldn't do it. You just let the flow uh, do whatever it needs to do. So it's running, started running 20 seconds ago. Uh, so that means that in our bank table over here, there you go, that's now automatically added those values, that's updated the chart. So the only question is, have we received our email? So to answer that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can open up my emails and then I can show you what that final email was. So give me a second here, and to stop sharing, uh, then I'm going to open up Outlook. The anticipation. I know. <laughs> okay, let's open that up. Let me minimize that. There we go. Right, let me share my screen again. I mean, to be honest, this could be any email. I mean, I could be sharing you almost anything, couldn't I? Um, we want to see screen that screen there, and then I'll click. Share. So hopefully you should see this screen again now. Let me delete that. So you've now got, so hi, Larry, that was the name of the person I made up. Our closing balance of 24068. That was the value that we picked up from the closing balance. And we also have a picture of the chart that we had inside Excel. And all of this was because we had this library of reusable scripts that we can then call upon uh, inside Power Automate. So that is just to demonstrate to you some of the things that we can do with Office scripts that you probably didn't know that we could do. So we can get images, uh, we can pass values backwards and forwards between Power Automate. We can build up this library of reusable scripts. So for this second project, where can you find uh, references uh, to these uh, information? Well, there's two blog, there's two blog posts I've got there, uh, which you can uh, take a look at. The first one is how do we move data? So how do we get data from a workbook and then push it into another workbook? And then how do we get images uh, from Excel and pass them into Power Automate and then push them into emails? So they are uh, two blog posts that kind of contain uh, the, uh, the code that uh, I've used in this project to example. Now I've shown you primarily around how we use Office Scripts with Power Automate. We can use Office Scripts by themselves just inside Excel. We saw that in our first example. So we could create, uh, in our first example, we created a script that changed cell values. Well, we've got Excel's document object model. We can create charts, we can create pivot tables. Um, we can create tables of contents. There's so much stuff we can do inside Excel itself. But what I wanted to show you was how this then works with Power Automate. And I think that's probably where people probably don't know or see the power that we have with Office Scripts uh, and Power Automate. So just to uh, bring this to uh, an end, other resources, so there's a list there of other Office Script resources. Uh, so on my blog, you can find uh, lots of uh, Office Script examples. My YouTube channel, there's lots of examples. Les Black runs a YouTube channel called Analysis Cloud. Uh, so he has lots of uh, Office Script uh, videos on there. Damien Bird is a Power Platform MVP. He has lots of uh, examples on his YouTube channel. Uh, Ian Carell uh, has some blog posts about how we use uh, Office Scripts. There's a group on LinkedIn, which is the LinkedIn Office Scripts group. So there's the link for that. Even on Microsoft's own website, there are examples that we can look at for how we might use Office Scripts. And finally, as I said at the start, so I have got a course about Office Scripts. Uh, to be honest, most of the stuff we look at today this is all the stuff towards the end. You know, this, the course covers how do we build up these scripts bit by bit? How do we get to the point where we build these uh, scripts and how do we start to work with Power Automate? So even if you're here, even if you've already bought my course, all the examples here uh, aren't even in this course. This is the stuff that you would learn throughout the course so you can then implement these things for yourselves. So that brings us to the end. Let me have a look in the chat to see if there are any questions. Are there any good questions, Alan? 
So, mate, just coming in. Um, not too much, really. Sergei asked some questions as, um, like, during the entire thing, uh, some of which I think you answered or he answered himself. Um, no, pretty quiet on, on questions, really. Let me read. Uh, so someone asked, can you, can, you, uh, can you add a narrative to the report body? Mm. Uh, so, Mark, I presume you're talking about um, the report body. Do you mean the, the body of the email? Um, I assume that was the bit that he was talking about. Uh, so, yes, you can. So you can, you can add narrative into that uh, email that you send. You can, any, so uh, any, pretty much any text that you can create in Excel, you can pull that text from Excel and push it into Power, into Power Automate and then use it in an email as dynamic text. So you could create a sentence that is, um, you know, the closing cash balance is, yesterday's cash balance was, and you can create those kind of dynamic sentences and uh, you've just got to structure your sentence in a way that makes sense depending on what those numbers uh, might be. And uh, you have a video on doing that. Do I? I believe you do, don't you? A summary statement? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, another question just come in from Tracy. Um, so it's like a why from Office 365? It's always sent from current account. Um, yeah, so, so I think you're talking about emails. So an, an email um, will be sent from your... Um, it's, it's sent from your email address. So because you're in uh, Office 365, because you need Microsoft 365, which means that your email is hosted um, by Microsoft on their 365 cloud, that means it is sending it from your email address. If you look at, if I were to look at my sent items, I would see those items in my sent items, even though I'm looking on desktop. So all of those emails are sent um, from your email address uh, as if you send them. So it's only the trigger is called Office 365. Uh, uh, so it is come from your current account. I think there is a, um, there are some triggers that, or there is a, some actions that let you send it from shared mailboxes and other options. Uh, so, okay. Okay. That's good. So any other questions? So this says, if bank statement is modified, flow doesn't work correctly. Uh, that is correct, but I think you'd be, um, I mean, the last time that a bank changed their, you know, downloads of what their downloads look like, I think that's quite rare. They tend to stick with quite similar formats. So, but yeah, if that format changed, then you would need to change your, uh, well, you I suppose, because it's picking up the used range, so pick up the used range from that workbook and then put it in your, into your table. So it's not the fact that flow wouldn't work, you'd have to make sure that your table uh, has the same columns as you've got in your bank download. So that would make sure that even if the bank statement, uh, even if the layout of that bank statement changes, it would still work. Uh, so a question from Melina, one more question, how long will I have to access it? Uh, so it, as, long as, as long as it takes you to finish it. So uh, it'll just be there for forever if you purchase the course. Um, if you become a member of my training academy, you get it for as long as you are a member. But if you purchase it, you will get it for, for life, as it were. Um, oh, there you go. You've, you've answered it, Alan. <laughs> you run it. You run it. Uh, how, how do you share this externally? That's a good question, Tracy. And the answer is, it's very difficult to share this externally. Uh, it's the thing about um, is it's primary, which is why it's primarily aimed at end users uh, rather than for developers. Now, what you can do is that once you've created your flow, um, you can save that Power Automate flow. Let me stop sharing my screen. Actually. Um, you can save that Power Automate flow as, an, uh, as a flow, and you can send that flow to somebody, uh, and they can, then, um, they can then import that flow into their system. They need to change their parameters, uh, but they would need to have those same Office scripts, which you can send them as standard files. So you can, stand them at, you can send someone an Office script file, and they can save it into their uh, folder, and that will, and that then becomes a, an Office script file that they've got. 
So you can share things. It's just not quite as smooth as just sending an Excel workbook, but you can send an Office script file. Someone can put it into their library and they can use it. Um, or if you've got an entire flow, you can send an entire flow, but then you have to deal with the permissions and how you update that. And it's not always as smooth as, as we might like. So that is a little bit tricky if you're working uh, outside of an organization. Uh, so, You see the Curtis question. Mark? Any other questions? One just in from Curtis. Uh, does PowerSmith give you a message if a script or component uh, within it fails and what will it look? Uh, so uh, you can use, I think Curtis, as, you, as you've captured that, you can use error trapping so that if there is an error, it can then notify you that there was an error. <clears throat> uh, you have to, there's, there's various videos online that show how to do that. It is slightly more complex than you might want, but yes, um, you can send it so that it will send you an email if there is an error. Alternatively, it could send you an email at the end if there's success. Uh, one's a positive verification that something has worked, but then means if it doesn't work, you don't get notified. Uh, but you can, um, but there is error trapping that you can put into Power Automate so you are notified if there is an error. Uh, so Mark, yes, anyone who's a member already has access to all of this. Uh, already so um uh yeah so mark mark's already a member so you don't need to pay again mark it's, you've, you've already got it just just log in and it's already there uh so generating him associated with VBA. Uh, <clears throat> i mean ultimately that is uh so looking at tracy's uh comment at uh 80 minutes past about generating him associated with vba it is but most of that is driven by like the it's about the entire environment and the entire framework. So not just thinking about, oh, it's Excel and it's VBA, because you've got VBA in Excel and that's sending things to Outlook. Instead, you've got this application that sits across everything, which is Power Automate, and therefore it has all these triggers and you can work with third-party programs and, uh, and lots of other um, third-party software that there are APIs that you really don't have to worry about how it works. Uh, it's it's a low code no code scenario so that is um that is there um so yeah it's easier than vba but equally as you noticed earlier tracy sharing it with others becomes a little bit trickier uh so mark says this is something that is a game changer uh, it can be i think what um I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say it's a game changer in the right scenarios, right? Because um, the a lot of that piece around how you move data around for that it's it's not as smooth as we might want it to be. Hopefully one day, and hopefully one day soon, um, we will get Power Automate. Um, I think mean Power. We'll get Power Query in Excel Online, and that will be plugged into uh, all of this Office Script stuff. Uh, at the moment. We don't have that, but when we get that, that will, so at the minute we have a really good tool here in terms of Power Automate and Office Scripts, but once we get, but once Power Query turns out, right, we've already got Power, we've already got data flows, right, in uh, in Power BI, that's a cloud-based implementation. So Microsoft have got to be bringing this into Excel at some point, at least I hope so. Uh, and once that is there, that then opens up a whole new, um, a whole new world. Uh, so hopefully that is, I just hope it turns up. Um, yeah, I, Carlos, I am excited by the concept of Power Query inside Excel Online. That will then, it will change this to a, another level. Uh, is the Power Automate default to overwrite existing file names? Yes, it is. Uh, so you saw there with those PDFs uh, that uh, it just overwrote those previous file names, but there's nothing to stop you um, you can create a dynamic file path so that each time you run those processes, you could you could save them in a June file or a July file or an August file. So um, you could save those separate files as you want to, as for different months, for example. So you don't always have to overwrite um, the stuff that's there. So 
any other questions, I'm happy to um, happy to answer them. Good. In which case, I'll hand it back over to you, Alan. I've got, I've got nothing to, to say. Well, I'll close down the YouTube stream if that's the case. That's what I will say and do. Do that. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, Thank you, Mark. That was great. We'll you tell you. On YouTube Thank too. you. Thank you, everyone, for oh, Tracy Williams. That was ace. Ace. Like it. <laughs> like it. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy, for joining. Have you got Tracy, have you got that autocorrect so that whenever you